to be back with you guys. We are live. We are coming back at you. It is Wednesday. We are kicking off the weekend in the middle of the week in and on your Island of Misfit Toys. As always, we really appreciate you guys supporting the show, coming out and supporting all the bitching guests that we're very, very blessed to have on the show and have a really great time with. So we've got Angel Alamo. We have the return of the Empress. Bobby Dreher yeah. is joining us this evening as well. And there might be a Psycho Steve watch out at the moment as well. well I'm here on potty duty. You know, I, I, I'm just pottying all the time. Right, Angel? I'm sure you are. You and Eddie Murphy oh, should yeah. get together about stuff like that, sir. But absolutely, oh, cool. we are... Very, very pleased to have our core four getting back together and always a fraternity, always members. We love the world. We are stoked to have Bobby with us and we are going to jump into it and have a good time this evening. We are being joined again by TMS alumni and very, very dear friends of the show, dear friends of ours. I got to interview them myself for the first time on their inaugural tour here in Baltimore when they played at Fishhead Cantina for their first record, their first child. But we are going to kick things off with them talking about their fourth child. First and foremost, Janet, Justin, Thank you so much for joining us and welcome back to the Metal Summit. Ah, thank Thanks you guys so us. much. We had so much fun last time we were here. Absolutely. Well, let's let the good times roll. Fourth child, no strings. Let's talk about it. It's been five days. Yeah. Well, Four. we're hoping this one's not a problem, child. Yeah. Hopefully not. So far, so good. Yeah. Not a C section. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Oh, sorry. <laughs> this, is an, this is an easy birth. Mm. Came out smooth. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it just came out twirling a cane. Yep. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So, no, uh, uh, the reaction's been great. We just couldn't be more happy. Uh, everybody who has commented uh, is seems to be really liking it, and everybody's picking different songs, different favorites, which is really nice too. Because you know, everybody's different. People are finding different, you know, things on it. So. Yeah, I mean, I think that's great. There's not like one clear, like, oh, there's only one good song on the whole album. <laughs> so, so that's great. People are picking different stuff. I love it. Absolutely. So what was a little bit of your guys' plan, if any, for, how, for, for what you wanted to do with No Strings? You know, when we first started, we didn't have a plan. Um, we actually started writing the songs for this album before the last album even came out. Uh, while we waited for production and everything else and, you know, the CD to be released for Synergy, we had already started working on this one. And um, it wasn't until about four or five songs in that we kind of started getting a total picture of the direction we wanted to go with this. And from there, it just took off. But I do have to say it was probably the hardest album, hardest working album for us that we've worked on since we started doing this, but in the end, it's all Yeah, it got kind of nuts. It got to the point where, you know, for a while I hated it. I was like, I just can't listen to this anymore. We were just so burnt out. Consumed by it. But we then just... after we put it away for a while and then, you know, put up the songs again, it was like, okay, it's good. We're on to something. I just freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it's not, it's always, it's always kind of a journey and you know you're always second guessing yourself and always thinking oh you know maybe we should start over on this but you know in the end you always end up it finding a, a, a path a path forward and and once we got going after about three or four songs then it was like okay we, we got this this is gonna work Absolutely. So you talked about writing the songs um, even before Synergy started coming out, but how have you sort of seen the overall trajectory gone so far when it comes to, you know, four albums in now? Have you found that the design and the way that you're writing together and the products come together as more of just a steady climb? Or do you find it's got a little bit of that kind of like roller coaster feel to it from album to album? I think it's been a, a pretty steady climb. I think so too. Yeah. I mean, there's always, you know, moments where, you know, things slow down a little bit, but I think, yeah, we've, we've kind of kept focused and we've tried to raise the bar each album, you know, how we make this one sound better, 
you know, how do we, you know, make the writing a little bit better? Let's, let's try to, to up our game every yeah. time. Yeah. Hopefully we've done that. Absolutely. Have you found that you're, I mean, you've always been, you know, very compatible, the two of you working together. How have you found your songwriting compatibility? Com how have you felt your songwriting, you know, compatibility? compatibility? Thank you, dear. From <laughs> album to album, <laughs> um, guess, you know, going from your first album now to no strings. I think it's gotten better. I think we understand each other more. And especially when we did the first album, we still had nerves and we were still kind of walking on eggshells a little bit because we didn't want to offend the other. We, you know, we avoided this for a while, even working on music together. And each album, it's just gotten easier and easier. And I think as we've gone on too, we've at the same time gotten more comfortable with each other and, you know, more open-minded towards what the other one. Well, yeah. Here. And the workflow has gotten so seamless. You know, we don't even have to say certain things. It's like, mm -hmm. I'll hop up, he'll sit down. He'll be doing stuff. He'll be like, your turn. So he'll oh. pop up and I'll sit down and I'll start doing stuff. So, I mean, it's like a, a tag team and we don't even really, a lot of things we don't even have to say much. Oh, it's like a total, like, you know, old WWF wrestling match or something where one gets <laughs> winded and is puffing and puffing and then you tag the other one. And yeah, we'll be sitting there on the, lay so on the couch. I'll, I'll be sitting there and be like, I got nothing. Come on, <laughs> get over here. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it works out really good because we do we really have a way of helping each other get unstuck for sure. Well, a lot of times that kind of block that writer's block thing. And all it takes is the other person to throw one good idea in and boom, you're back, you know, you're back on track. So that's, it's just, I can't tell you how amazing it is to have a partner with that. You have that kind of chemistry with it's amazing feeling. Yeah, absolutely for sure when you're crafting your songs together how do you guys look at it when it comes to who does this part versus that part does it just kind of come naturally do you kind of get a person a particular feeling looking at the other where it's like i think you might be better with this one or i'm kind of feeling this can i roll with it how do you kind of look at the crafting of the songs well that you kind of nailed it you know oh, right on. yeah I'll take High five. <laughs> whoever, whoever is feeling it the most, let them go. You know, if somebody's on a roll, if he's on a roll, go do it. And then, you know, if he gets stuck, then I'll jump in and vice versa. I mean, we're somewhat departmentalized. Yeah. I mean, I tend to do more of the rhythm section, bass and drums and that kind of stuff. And of course he does the guitars and I do, little bit of guitars <laughs> when you got him you know you don't have to do a lot of guitar playing but you know we both do everything and yeah. you know when it's time for keyboards he usually leaves it's like I, i'm not i'm not playing any keyboards that's you i'll come up with little ideas but it's like little finger like like and then she'll come in and go okay how about this and then all right there you go no hold on to you 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 wrote that opening thing that, that is little true. fender Rhodes thing that was that was this guy. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, we don't really have, we try not to restrict ourselves. And a lot of times, you know, he'll make me do something I don't want to do and, and vice versa. But in the end, it's always for the best. If he's like, you know, it needs your input or I'll be like, you got to play this guitar part because I'm not making it happen. This is not good. So it's, it's kind of free form. Absolutely. And one more thing in this segment before I kick it up to Angel. Um, you, we talked a little bit about it uh, briefly, like off the air and about kind of like watching the reactions. But how have you, how have the initial reactions uh, from your fans uh, been to the release? Awesome. I mean, beyond words can't even explain how happy they've made us feel from, you know, the fans and our friends responding to, you know, the album. And, you know, the day before and the day of a release, you're looking, you're checking, make, you know, seeing what people say, because, you know, you, you're hoping people are going to like it and get what you just did and the vision you had. And I think of all four albums we've done, this one has by far exceeded what we were expecting. So 
Yeah, I mean, very few even lukewarm comments. Yeah. yeah. Mostly positive. I mean, you get your, your trolls and you can write them off, you know, because you know they're just trolls. Right. Um, but our, you know, our true fans and people who like what we do in general have been really, really supportive of this album. So very happy, happy campers. That's awesome. That is so great. Metal Summoners, our honorary bro, our mate Blevins is joining us. What's up, my guy? What's happening? Sorry, I'm walking around. I'm trying to find my glasses. I can't see without them. No worries, man. It's all good. Take your time. Get settled. Angel, let's kick it up to you, my good dude. Why don't you take it away for a minute? I just want to say thank you for joining us. I definitely love the um, album. I just, with the, the title track, No Strings, it's something you guys did that's totally different, unexpected. Um, how did that come together? And were you guys afraid to kind of take chances putting a song like that on on the record. I heard Justin down here just messing around playing that. And and I'm like, what is that? He's like, I don't know. I'm just, you know, messing around, playing, you know, practicing. No mom. Play that again. Let's <laughs> let's work on that. And that's how that came about. I just happened to be listening to what he was doing and I fell in love with it. And yeah, we did kind of go, well, it's different for us. It sounds like John Mayer or something, <laughs> you know, but it's like, I felt it right away. So we knew it was right. It was like, I, you know, we're not gonna let this this pass. And then, you know, we worked on the, the pre-chorus and the chorus together. And then the chorus, I think we sort of took it a little more in a direction that kind of, you know, fits with, with who we are um but yeah when he first started playing that i just felt it and you obviously did too you were playing it <laughs> I mean, yeah it, it was well it was something different it was you know we are who we are and we're always going to kind of have that, that our sound but it was something fresh it was something slightly on a different path than what we normally do and as soon as she started doing her vocal melodies over that guitar part in the beginning, it was just like, oh, this is it. This is awesome. Nice. That's super duper awesome. We, we definitely going to go from talking about music to hair. We got a fan question. Um, oh, okay. You both have amazing jump. hair. What is your favorite hair product? <laughs> hey, I'm curious because Justin, you fucking look awesome in the videos. The way you be swinging your hair, I'm like, oh, what, thank what, you. What hair product do you use, man? Oh god, I mean, uh, Beyond the Zone, um, silicone yeah, you... straightener with the hair straightener with the flat iron. I know what products he uses. She knows Beyond the Zone, than I do. The orange bottle of silicone spray. It makes it really slippery, so when you flat iron it, it's nice and flat. Oh my God, Angel. And I thought I was the gay one on here. <laughs> I love the long hair. Feel my thunder. <laughs> he proves way more than I do, for hey, sure. Hey, hey. I'll, I have to fight my way to the, to the mirror. I'm like, honey, can I please just get a little bit of the mirror? She's so full of it. <laughs> oh. I just chopped all mine off. <laughs> <laughs> that was your point. Hmm. Uh, what do you think had a barking dog too? And I thought it was our dog. Who, who has the barking dog? Angel. I do. I got. Oh, okay. Yeah, it sounds just like our dog. I was like, is that Jazzy or is Angel? It? You got a dog now? <laughs> Angel's got a dog. Yeah, you know how it is. Yeah. Oh, poor Bob. Jumped on us here. I got a barking rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and who would be a barking now? rabbit? <laughs> Who's Blevin Fox? Um, that's our, that's our guy Chris from Voodoo Thirteen, 13 now Thirteen South. Yo, how's it going, Bobby? Just uh, 
pretty good. Because yeah. oh, I want one of those. <laughs> hey, it's a little bit of McAllen eighteen. So you know, like, well, Tony will be eighty-one tomorrow. So I figure I'll, I'll reverse it. Nice, cheers, nice. brother. I, 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 it's like it's like a winger Ooh. plus one. <laughs> yeah, I can't I can't have have here for myself, I will be right back. <laughs> Did you say winger plus one? Yes, 17. <laughs> so, Janet, I gotta ask you this you know, look, um, it just came. We were on, we mentioned before we got on the air, we were on the cruise. I'll save it. And a good friend of ours definitely uh, did something yeah, that he, he was uh, wishes he never did was play basketball. But right, I got to ask: Were you on the deck when Extreme did their set? No, no, no. We heard about it later. Yeah, we were doing something. What were we doing? I don't what it was. Yeah, we missed it. We missed that one. But no, we were talking to Joe Holton, but later on that night, he was the one that told us about it. The game was pretty cool. What happened, and it was just like, holy cow. Ugh. I mean, that just yeah. so yeah. unfortunate. I mean, especially, I mean, for those, I mean, that was big for them. I mean, they are just released, you know, that amazing. Oh, um, the, al the album's incredible. But, it, you know, the thing is, is, uh, I, I mean, the bar being raised right now, look, you guys just put an album out. It, it's really hard. I mean, you know, you, King's X put an album out. Kip put an album out as well, you know, right. with theirs. Yeah. Uh, to break through in this uh, market right now, you guys got to do a lot of legwork. I mean, how has it been on you mentally and, you know, physically? I mean, that's got to really be taking a toll. I mean, we, we love it and it's important to us. So it's all kind of a labor of love. Absolutely. So it's not, you know, I mean, we love talking to people. So we love doing this, which is, you know, what we're doing. We love playing live, which we're going to do to help support this. Which is the best thing ever to get the music out there. Yeah, right. I mean, it's all a labor of love. So, I mean, I'm not, we're certainly not complaining. No, it, Bring it. it Bring it. Yeah. It's refreshing this time because when we put out the last album, Synergy, it was right during lockdown. So we put yeah. it out and in some ways we thought, okay, this is cool, you know, about new music, you can't go see shows. But the other end of it was we couldn't promote it either. We couldn't get out there and play live shows and that sucked. So this time around, it, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's worth it and it's, it's good work. It's actually what they say when it's what you enjoy, it's not really work. Yeah, and like with Synergy too, we made four videos at home because we weren't playing any gigs, no venues were open, there was nothing else we could do. So, I mean, it was kind of cool because, you know, we had to get creative. We had to figure out how to keep moving forward, you know, despite the, the horrible things that were going on. And it inspired a lot of songs and some of the videos. But this time it's great because it's like, it's kind of normal again. We can go out and play and, you know, talk to people face to face even. Yeah. So yeah, we love it. Who did you guys have? Was fun. No, who no. did you guys no. have work on the album with you? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> You're looking at them. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's been this way since the start. It's it's always been just the two of us from the songwriting to the instruments being played to the mixing and mastering of it really yeah and it, it's kind of you know people about you know we've, we've thought about like you know our drummer richie and our bass player anthony and you know having other people our like, guest musicians but we just kind of developed this little i don't know we're, we're very protective of our little music thing here so i think we're going to continue this for a while until we run out of ideas and we'll pull somebody else in nice Absolutely, for sure. Chris, our good friend Chris Blevins, you are needed, my friend. Let's bring you in for a minute. Okay. I can't hear good, but, well, it's not I can't. My phone's not loud enough for some reason, but, yeah, I think I can do it. Uh-oh. Okay. No worries, brother. You've got some southern charm going on there. 
Yes, ma'am, I do. I'm from <laughs> Mississippi. Are you? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Love the accent. Well, thank you. So, yeah, um, I was, uh, sorry, hold on just a second. My, uh, you got something, Jay, real quick or something? My phone's, no, no hold on. No worries, man. Absolutely. Take your time, man. It's all good. So what I, was thinking, it. what I was thinking about for like my, my next question was this. So you guys already talked about it just in your last answer with Synergy coming out during the blackout and not really getting to tour on that. Well, you're about to hit the road to promote no strings. How are you guys kind of crafting your set list now? You have four albums out, so you have plenty of material. You want to push the new record, but what's your plan to kind of get Synergy involved if you want to get Synergy involved since you didn't really get to, to push it very well? That's really a good question. Wow, you just gave us something new to think about that we weren't thinking about before. <laughs> yeah, you know, we we do, we do, we're definitely going to play a couple of the new songs in the set, but we don't know what to get rid of. And we definitely are going to play Wounded off of Synergy. That was kind of our biggest song off that album. So we'll do that. We'll do a couple new songs. And then that doesn't leave a lot of room for, we got to throw some stuff out and we don't know what we're going to get rid of. It, it's so hard. It's, it's a, it's a great problem to have, but yeah, it's, we're going through our set list and if we're headlining the show, it's not a big deal because we're playing a 75 minute set most likely, but when we're opening for somebody else, then it's, a 45 to an hour show and yeah we definitely have to cut a couple songs so yeah and it's gonna be hard to get the, any kind of pacing when it's so short like that so yeah yeah we haven't totally worked that out yet but we've we have been talking about it so we'll, we'll nail it down well, soon and what's cool is we we kick off the first show next friday um and something we don't ever do richie who lives in nashville our drummer and anthony who lives in jersey our bass player are actually going to fly in a day early and for the second time ever since we've been doing this for five years, we are going to practice and have a rehearsal. Rehearsal? What's that? Yeah. We're going to have an actual rehearsal <laughs> and work out what sounds the best, you know, what everybody's feeling and jiving with and uh, go from there. Well, and that'll tell a lot, too. Right. We can definitely, we'll be able to know, you know, what feels the best. So that'll help us nail down the set list. Yeah. Absolutely, for sure. And just for the fans, of course, that are watching and the fans that will be watching um, after we post this as well that are going to be curious. Of course, you had such a very established career um, and legacy when it came to Vixen. Do you still plan to splice a couple of those songs in? Again, like I said, with such uh, with four records out now, there's no shortage of original material for Janet and Justin to where it might not necessarily be necessary. But what are your thoughts on that, if any? Of course. But I, I don't think I'll ever be able to go on stage and leave without singing Edge of a Broken Heart. I just don't think that's going to be allowed. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we don't want people going, boo, where is Edge of a Broken Heart? So, yeah, we'll play a few of them, right? Yeah. No, we'll, we'll definitely keep the big hits in the set list for sure. And they're great songs, and they're fun to play. And we did a tour of Europe on our first album where we couldn't do any of those songs and holy crap, did we get kickback for not doing those songs, but it was out of our hands at that time. And, uh, yeah. So no, we'll definitely do them. They're fun songs. They're great songs. And, uh, yeah, I mean, we'll throw a couple new ones in there and then fire the old ones, go figure out what we got to can and, sure. you know, maybe from show to show, mix it up a little bit, do, one or two well, that's songs. true. I mean, that's a good thing, too, is that now some of them we've played so many times are kind of ingrained and we can just throw it in on an instant. Right. A few of them we've played for five, six, seven years. Well, what's kind of cool, too, is, so, is like some of the Vixen songs like Edge of a Broken Heart. We recently on the Monsters of Rock cruise, we did it. We, we did acoustic sets and we started dabbling with that. And one day. You know, we were trying to think of how we can make some of these things interesting. And we came up with a whole new rendition of Edge of a Broken Heart that I think is really cool. It's different. It sets it apart and it kind of renews it a little bit. You know, I mean, it's always been kind of new for me, but for Janet and it's it's fun. And I think it sounds pretty good. 
Yeah, totally different. And that that was really nice. It made it almost feel like a new song to me. It, it was, you know, it's a little slower. It's a little more moody. And um, yeah, it felt fresh again. So you never know. We might have to rearrange some of them for, for our shows. <laughs> Absolutely, Matt, and a hundred percent. That's super duper cool. When um, and uh, before we kick it over to Bobby, we do have the dates going along the bottom of the screen for all you fans that want to see when they're coming to your town. But since they're scrolling by and we don't see where it begins right now, when are you going out on tour and where are you starting at? Because it's a very cool story with where you're starting at. Next Friday is our first show. We are playing with Queensryche at the Arcata Theater in St. Charles, Illinois. There it goes by. Um, <laughs> there it is. For one, it's a great, great venue. It's the perfect size, great stage, great lighting, great screen, just the whole, it's, it's perfect. It's a great place. And it just happens to be the very first place that the two of us met. So it's very special to us. And to have this be the first show that we hit when we put this new album out is really special to the two of and us. And Strike is amazing and they never disappoint. So it's yes. going to be a great night. Absolutely, for sure. Um, and just for some fun, um, can you elaborate a little bit? Like Janet, were you performing? Justin, were you uh, there at the venue as a as a fan, or were you playing as well? Can you elaborate on the meeting? Janet was performing, and I was friends with. She was doing a show with Lita Ford, and I was good friends with her tour manager at the time. So I was there to hang out and catch up with him, and we happened to see each other backstage and it was just like whoa i i felt like a little kid again and i think i stared at the floor longer than i looked at anything because i was too nervous to you know make eye contact and have a solid conversation with her so we just exchanged a few words and yeah we didn't say much that first night and then a whole year went by almost yeah before we saw each other again ran in, into each other again in this area at farm rock and then we started talking more. Right. And then she tried to kill me that night with, with, with whiskey, uh, Maker's, <laughs> Maker's Mark. I asked for a shot of it, and she gave me a huge solo cup, like yeah, filled to the glass. top. And I was nice. trying to get drunk and take advantage of it. And what, I try, what, what can I say? I tried to be the impressive guy. I'm like, I could do this. I got this. I had to be taken to the hospital in the morning. I no. saw him. I saw him. I saw him the next morning, and it was quite a sight. Ooh. Oh wow! Not looking good. He's always looking good. But oh okay. no, we we love that. Just, Justin, were you? Um, oh, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. Justin, were you? Um, were you referencing um our our good friend, but um the late great George? when you were uh, talking about the Lita Ford show? No, no, I would, Craig Bradford actually is who I'm talking about. Oh, with Craig, okay. Yeah. Nice. Great guy. Absolutely. Yeah, so we knew him too. <laughs> Absolutely, no, we, we always uh, we always loved uh, we we always loved us some George and stuff and we always had nothing but good things to say about that gentleman and a lot of love um, went out to the Lita Ford camp as well for sure when it came to that situation but I think it's about time as well to bring in our beloved Bobby Dreyer again welcome Hi. back again my good man yes we are still nice we are still nice and blonde ah hey look this is a uh, mega blonde right now yeah uh, so re really i gotta go this route so we were on the cruise and i always wondered how do you janet do this when you're on an event like that it's you and vixen same thing with a lot of other artists when they're with the other half. I mean, how does it, you know, it, it's kind of like, oh, wait a second. How do you know what to play, what not to play? Do you feel like you're stepping on toes? No, well, they weren't there. Vixen was not on the, the cruise that we were on, so we could play whatever we wanted. So, I, so far that has never happened. We have never been on an event where Vixen is also on it. So... There's no doubling of songs or anything like that. And I don't see that happening, honestly. I don't think anybody would book that. I think they would either book us or them, not both. 
So, yeah. Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Has it ever <laughs> happened, though? I mean, or, or have you ever played at a no, venue? The Bullet Boys did that once. Yes. Yeah, there was two different versions of the Bullet Boys on the cruise. And I don't know what and they Great did. White, too. I, I've seen that. When both and, of them were there. Oh, you know, yeah. And, you right. know, how do you, you know. I don't know what they do. I don't know if everybody has to sit through the same songs again. I don't know. I, yeah, so far it has not come up for us, so I don't. Yeah, that would that would honestly be weird. And I, yeah, I don't think I don't think Larry would do that on one of the cruises. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't think Larry would do it. But you know, look, I, I've seen promoters do a couple crazy things. Yeah, you know? I don't. I don't think it would. Have, I think I think we would probably decline. If Dixon was playing the same event because you know we would want to play a couple of the same songs not most of the set mind you most of the set is our material now but we do play a few different songs so I, I don't know it would be weird so the other thing too is with your uh, you guys are on the same I guess promotion company with Plush and a lot of the newer artists as well right and um yeah, you're 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 also uh, I I guess your promoter. I, I met with a gentleman in about a few weeks, and I, I just noticed he's on there, uh, and he's calling it quits, which would be Mr. Um, Theodore Nugent. Oh right, I forgot about that. Yes, Who, what the Nugent? Oh, Ted, Ted's right. quit. Yeah, he's done. Oh yeah, okay. yeah. Yeah, his last that. album was on pavement. <laughs> even know that. Come on, get with it. I know. Woo. Yeah. So I, I mean, uh, have you ever been booked with a artist that you would align with? That we what? What was that? That you don't align with. That yeah, oh, I, no. I'm saying like you're going, oh, this is not a good fit. I don't think so. Can you think of any? I, I, for the most part, we've been pretty lucky. Yeah, I mean, we've had some kind of goofy opening. We've, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've had like in the middle of nowhere, you know, Wisconsin or Minnesota. Yeah, where there's been a local, and go, whoa, a local <laughs> opener or something that you could tell the promoter was putting their friend's band up, you know, to open the show, and it was you know, it didn't jive with what we what we are, you know, mm. be death metal or something like that. And it's like, oh boy, but most of the time. They get it. Yeah, it's somebody in this similar genre or similar. Most promoters are pretty aware of who they're booking and what the audience, you know, sh is going to be yeah. and what they're going to like. So, yeah, for the most part, it's been pretty good. But yeah, we've had some goofy opening bands. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, and I don't even want to use the word goofy, but I love that August twenty fifth. You're out on the road with my good buddy. Dude, how you doing, bud? Come on, let's go for a drink. Sebastian and <laughs> Quiet Riot. That's going to be awesome. That is going to be so much fun. And the cool thing is it's like a 20-minute drive from our house. Oh, my God. Yeah. That just makes life so much easier, too. Oh, that's going to be good. That, that's a three-beer show. You know, you're like, yeah. oh. Yeah, this. anytime you don't have to get on a plane these days, it's a oh. blessing. It's a blessing. And for me, like, I mean, Slave to the Grind was, that's one of my top albums ever. So to get to share the stage with Sebastian is going to be awesome. That's and you're be out with Quiet Riot, too. Rudy, <laughs> yeah. Rudy is amazing. Oh, such a good so guy. Nice. So I good. love those guys to death. Yeah. I love Sebastian, too. I, I've never been anything but nice and fun and energetic. He's like a, he's like a kid. You know, like a fun loving kid. So on the Kiss Cruise, my room was between Michael Sweet and Sebastian Bach. Ah, Ooh, nice. I, I had the heaven and hell room. You totally did. <laughs> so, yeah, those two had like a little feud for a while, didn't they? I, and they made up on the cruise because I had Fitzy and everybody come over, and it was <laughs> Eddie Drunk kept calling me, going, Oh my God. What was it like? I'm going, oh, I, I, I felt like Dr. F I, I, I was the gay Dr. Phil. <laughs> Dr. Phyllis. 
<laughs> yes, here you go. Oh, that's great. But it, it was, uh, I, I love Baz. Honestly, who hasn't had a feud with Sebastian? Really, though. I mean, I'm surprised I haven't. I'm going to start one. <laughs> you. Makes it all fun. Yeah. How, how do you know if you've made it? A feud with Sebastian Bach. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or Axel Rose. There you go. Right. There you go. Maybe <laughs> throw in a little Vince Neal. And there you got go. It. So before we flip it over to anybody else, I got to ask you your most memorable moment on the Monsters Cruise. Ooh. Ooh. God, there were so many. Um, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I mean, for one, I say this all the time, there's nothing cooler than at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you're in your cabin room bed, and you're feeling like you want to go see hardcore superstar or, or a great band. You can walk right out your door and go 100 feet and see a kick-ass band. That's awesome. But I have to say one of the highlights mm -hmm. was, you know, Justin played with Taiketo. Um played bass with them for a while and they did their last show with their core lineup with, you know, Chris Green and, um, you know, Michael, Michael. Yeah. And it was an amazing show and it was really emotional. Oh God. That was a highlight. It was, it was such a good show. That room exploded. Yeah. And you know, they're, they'll never be the same again. I mean, Danny's amazing. So he will always, be Taiketo and always carry on. But, you know, the loss of those two guys, that was a great moment, I thought. Yeah. It was an amazing show. And I teared up a little, I got to say. And I got to say, the rare hair jam, look, Tyson, oh I give you credit for everything. Everything you guys done that night was one of my highlights. Between Extreme and the rare hair jam was a blast. Well, that, that was funny, actually, the Rare Hair, because we were the first song to perform for Rare yeah. Hair. Yeah, I just posted photos of you guys. So if you go to my Facebook page, oh, awesome. there's okay. pictures up there of you guys. When we walked into the theater for that, because we had just come from doing our own show, and we walked in, and everybody's running around. And when you get, like, 12 amazing guitar players on stage at one time testing their amplifier, it's... It gets a little hectic. It, it was a, a little crazy. It was a noodle nightmare. Is yeah, that what? it was crazy. <laughs> we were the first that was supposed to, to perform, and all of a sudden they started announcing the show, and Jen and I are going, "We don't have guitars yet." And you know, one of the guitar players goes, "Are you kidding me? You're the first act, and you guys don't even have guitars yet." Yeah, you're ten seconds away from going on stage, and you don't have guitars. So like, it, no, because we told Tyson, we said we're playing acoustic, we won't have electric. Guitars, so we need guitars. No problem. There will be plenty of guitars. So, and we didn't want to get in the way. So, as the noodle nightmare was going on, we were just kind of waiting. Like, okay, well, we'll get our chance to Beautiful. grab a guitar, Plug tune in, up, check and, it. and check the tone and figure it out. And that never happened. All the stuff announcing the show, and we have no guitars. Mm -hmm. like, no. like, okay. Uh, Luckily, it worked out. It happened. My God, Tyson, what a! I there's nobody who works harder. Than Tyson. I love Tyson. I think um, he's Tyson's a, great. I, yeah, amazing. He's such a good guy, and yeah. you know he had a lot on his plate on that cruise. He was playing with everybody and trying to organize the rare hair thing, and yeah. people were, you know dropping out and then he was adding new people it was just it was crazy but you know he managed to start that rare hair thing in a very small venue on the cruises and it grew and grew and grew and it was in the theater yeah. it was in the yeah. venue on the boat this time so good for him he's awesome yeah so, so the three of us myself angel and bobby were in nashville earlier this year for rock and pod if you guys are familiar with that richie's yeah. been a guest a few times being that it is in nashville bobby yep. was celebrating 10 years of of harem and debunko radio and angel and i were holding it down for tms but it was great because we went to the rare hair and we saw tyson doing his thing you know at that uh, the Nashville showing of that, and then I went, and then the three of us were also at M uh, M three, which of course Janet, yeah. you're very familiar with. 
Um, and mm-hmm. uh, I ran into Tyson backstage and we got to talk a little bit because he's also been a guest on the show as well. Um, in fact, he's probably long overdue to come back on the show. So we might have yeah. to reach out to him. But, uh, yeah. but yeah, it was, but I, I got to talk to him <laughs> a little bit, and, you know, thank him for everything he does with rare hair and just get to kind of chit chat with him because he is such a great guy who really is amazing to watch perform when he himself goes from like this part of rare hair on keys this part on guitar this this band on bass this song that song that song so yeah he's, he's just a really great guy and we appreciate what he does he's gifted and yeah sure. I did, you know just as a fellow musician too i don't know how he can play all those instruments remember all those songs and you know do it's amazing to me my brain there's no way i could process i break his chops all the time i keep saying eh, you're asian <laughs> no he is so talented and just yeah yeah such a no great there's guy. there's definitely something different in him that allows him gives him that ability that very yeah. few people have yeah absolutely 100 percent. angel let's bring you back in my good man because it looks like we've also got some fan questions starting to pop up oh yeah who would you say is your biggest influence musically who, Justin or me or both of us? Both of you, both. each of you, all of you. <laughs> For me, it would have to be, Kiss. yeah, Kiss. Hands really? down. It would be Kiss, but again, it would be the 80s era Kiss. The Bruce Kulick is a guitar player. I mean, that was what I got into first when I was introduced to them. And I mean, I love Ace Freely. Ace Freely is amazing. I love all, I mean, they could do no wrong in my opinion, but Bruce Kulick, Eric Kiss was definitely, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that is killer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, Kiss, UFO, White Snake, John Sykes era White Snake. just that guitar was freaking beastly. It was amazing. Um, and Jakey e. Lee, of course, I love his style of playing. So those are probably my biggest influences. I had a lot of just singer influences growing up, like, um, you know, Bonnie Raitt, Janis Joplin, um, you know, if you go back further, Etta James, those were like my vocal kind of influences. But when I started getting into bands, I really fell in love with um, like the first Boston album. Uh, nearly exploded my brain when I heard it. I was just like, oh my God. What is this? This is amazing. Um, so then that's when I kind of started getting more into bands. And then, of course, you know, then I backtracked and started listening to Zeppelin and Bad Company and uh, Aerosmith, 70s bands, still love 70s bands. Um, yeah, and that's kind of how it went for me. I, I heart, of course. Oh, nice. You can't, you know, I. Hey, Justin? This just came out today. What is that? It's I, I was in the grocery store. It just came out. You said you got that at the grocery store? Yeah, today. So all right, I gotta run out. I'll be right back. <laughs> That's awesome. So uh you know, I was I, I was amazed to see, and it goes through every decade of KISS. And uh, I was just like <laughs> Oh, that is awesome. That and this came out as well. So Rolling Stone just put, this is every interview with Mick Jagger from you know, Rolling I'm, Stone. I'm, dude, my I'm, girlfriend just bought I'm, that magazine yesterday, dude. This wow. is amazing. I mean, the two of them are just like it, it's like oh, oh there it is. The, yeah. <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> Hey, hey, Angel, since you're getting a colonoscopy, these are the best potting material ever. You can potty all the time. Takes a lot. I'm doing that today, but you could have given me that earlier, dude. <laughs> you know, great. great reading material for the bowl. That's awesome. That's <laughs> Yeah. What's the point of it if it's tomorrow? I'm not today. You'll be up all night. You're going to be partying all night. 
and rocking, rolling all day. I was trying. I was trying. I was trying not to think about that while doing the show. But thanks a lot for the reminder. Oh. <laughs> hey, just think of me you as know. your, you know, sphincter friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, Glenn says thank you. She'll be using it in the waiting room. <laughs> But Janet, that the Rolling Stone one is every article that they did on Mick. I'm gonna have to do that. For yeah, sure. it, it's That's a must too. You yeah. know, it, it's. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, sure. Angel. Didn't mean to get that personal. No, the the <laughs> Rolling Stone <laughs> magazine. Okay. The Rolling Stone magazine is actually really, We're really family. cool. Like my. Uh, yeah. No, absolutely. The Rolling Stone magazine is really, really cool, and like. My girlfriend, Megan, she's got a radar for that kind of stuff because her father, who unfortunately isn't with us anymore, um, he uh, was a big Rolling Stones guy, like to a crazy degree. So like the Rolling Stones are very, very big in, in her family between herself and her mom and stuff like that. So anytime that we like move around or, you know, go to bookstores or various stuff when like. When Rolling Stone stuff pops up, we always have to like look at it. There was a very cool uh, kiosk actually at the M3 Festival this year that did like custom like cut up clothing and stuff like that. And uh, and Megan found a pretty cool uh, shirt that she just threw to me uh -huh. um, for uh, for the for the Rolling Stones that she oh, got. Nice. Where it's all like chop. Yeah. It's hard to tell on with the light flashing. But it's all like cut up and stuff yeah. like that. But it's like, it's super Great. duper cool. But uh, we uh, we hold the uh, Rolling Stones pretty uh, pretty close um, between the two of us because I always want to, you know, look out for her. But yeah, her uh, the Rolling Stones are big to her family and stuff like that. So when we saw that magazine that uh, that Bobby brought up, we were like, yeah, we we were all over that too. Gotta have it. So, Justin, I got to geek you out on this. So, a, a good friend of mine, I, I do a KISS radio podcast as well with a gentleman, Matt Porter. We love him to death. And I had the opportunity. He had a friend who passed away, but he was very close with a lot of the members of KISS. And I'm going to show you. I, I'm going to KISS geek you out right now. So, Matt told me to come over and goes, look, you're you're a thin guy. I have something, if it fits you, you can have it. And Frank passed away. So this was Eric Carr's military shirt. Oh, right. I recognize that already. I mean, that was the hot in the shade era, I think. Yes. So Matt gave it to me, and it's Eric's. I'm going to wear it to the last show it in Madison Square Garden. Wow. Awesome. That is so and I'm with the guys. So, uh, and if they want, and everybody goes, is it authentic? I'm going, yeah, it is, because there's a whole <laughs> right here. And if anybody knows anything about, yeah, this, so this was Eric Carr's shirt. Wow. How cool. The is other cool thing Matt gave me, which I love to death, is cool. the nice. Lick It Up album. And look, Vinny didn't charge $25,000. Amazing. That's incredible. <laughs> wow, that is really cool. But this, I, I mean, look, if anybody's a KISS fan, I don't care which error, but, uh, you know, God bless Eric Carr. What what an amazing Absolutely. individual. Amazing drummer and just a very, very kind person. So I got to ask you, favorite, both of you, fake, you know, look, Everybody's a KISS fan. You know, that was one reason why this show and everything, everything gravitates either back to Alice or KISS. Yeah. Favorite KISS song. Doesn't matter which era or whatever, but favorite KISS song that means something to either one of you. Well, my favorite KISS song, period, is a million to one off of Lick It Up. Um but Asylum was also the album that I really gravitated towards when it came out. And Who Wants to Be Lonely, I just, I love that song. It's, it's a great song. So those, I gave you two, but yeah, hard for me to pick. But I would say A Million to One is my favorite off of Lick It Up. Janet? I like that one we just heard it, but I just want to. Oh, I just, I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> I love that song. 
I just want to. I do. I think it's clever and funny. I, I, I think, you know, I, there, you know, and I even go back to some of the really stuff that the deep cuts that a lot of people don't like, and we just talked about it. I love Unmask and I love Torpedo Girl. It's just something about Ace's voice on there that's just, it's quirky, it's fun. It's, it is. Uh, Unmasked is awesome. I, easy as it seems. I mean, there's so many great songs. Is that you? I, my daughter actually listens to Unmasked like crazy, and I always have a proud, a proud dad moment when I hear that. <laughs> I think it's that's super great. awesome. I think it's super awesome, Justin, that you're an 80s kiss guy, because so am I. Oh, like, sweet. Don't, like, don't get me wrong. Like the the seven, like great. I mean, Black Diamond is a hundred percent in one oh, of my yeah. in my top five favorite Kiss songs and all that kind of stuff. But I it has a little bit to do with like my age as well. But I love that '80s era. It was a little bit. It was a little bit heavier. But I also kind of liked the stylistic changes that they started doing. So like, right. I love the song crazy, crazy nights. You know, I love heavens on fire. I love, let's put the X in sex. Like, you know, I just love what they were doing in those. And as much as I would have loved for it to stay the original band all the way up to present. I mean, you know, you know, Mark, God rest his soul. And of oh. course, I mean, Bruce, I mean, dude, Bruce, oh. like, Oh, we love Kill. And the Lake, we love Bruce. Great oh, Eric Carr, of course. I mean, there was something about the way that the chemistry worked with Eric on the kit, you know, and the combination of, you know, Mark at one point, Bruce at one point, and even Vinny at one point. That was just, it was a unique flavor for that decade. Absolutely. It fit the 80s perfectly. And yeah. I mean, the Paul songs in the the 80s I just thought were again to me and Janet makes fun of me he could do no wrong in my opinion I just they were solid they were great and his voice was just epic you know when Crazy Nights came out that album his voice was strong and I mean he was reaching notes that were could shatter glass it was crazy yeah. so and Jana was, I gotta ask you this real quick who influenced who did you influence Paul or did he influence you <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Come on! When Vixen came out, it was Caref almost that whole period right there. It was like careful, oh, Bobby. Wait, you know, <laughs> wait. I'm not going trans on anybody. I'm not. I didn't say Vinny. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Rosie. <laughs> we did like a week of the Hot in the Shade tour. Um, it was Slaughter Winger and Kiss. Wow. And Slaughter went to Europe or something. And so we filled in in Texas for a week. And I got to say, I was blown away. They were amazing. It was, it was awesome. When anybody ever asked Janet, what was your favorite tour back in the day? I answer for her and say, Kiss, Kiss on the Shade, of yeah, course. We, we weren't on for very long. We did like a week worth of days. I, I, it was, was five shows. I, now, Janet, I got to ask you that. I love that we're going into Kiss. We're a lot, a lot <laughs> of out on this. But was it difficult for you to go out and go, oh, shit, I'm opening for Kiss? Look, it's not that it, it's Kiss. It's not like you're sitting there and going, uh, they have that behind them and you're going, oh my God, I'm kissed. Did it make you push yourself and everybody in the band? Oh, for sure. That much harder. For sure. You have to up your game. I mean, they put on a show that is unmatched. So yeah, I think we've made us better for sure. I mean, we, we opened for the Scorpions and Deep Purple and... But this is Kiss. Oh, yes. Everybody I, not, yeah. Yeah. For, <laughs> me, for me, Deep Purple, to me, is what Kiss is to you. So nice. for me to be on stage or backstage looking at John Lord and Ian Pace... And Glover and every... Yeah. Yeah. Was like, that was my Kiss moment. So... As much as I love the kiss thing, for me, my heart was like racing when playing with Deep Purple because that was my, you know, I grew up listening to those albums like, oh, they were gods to me. So 
it's a little different, but Kiss was amazing and they put on an awesome show. And yes, it was an incredible moment. Okay, so I'm going to do the gay TMZ vo uh, moment right now. Uh, <laughs> did did Gene hit on you? No, he hit on Jan. Really? Oh, really? <laughs> I, I had to bring the. I'm like sorry, I had to get hit on by Jan. Right? So yeah, <laughs> it was Jan. So I got I got a I got a question it for this scary. segment because it was oh. she iced him totally. And I gotta say, look at Jay right now. Tell me he doesn't look like Gene. It's like <laughs> I want him to do that voice. No, oh, there you go. That's the, the gestures he's got it yep. going on. He's got it. I feel like I'm watching Family Jewels wow. right now. Well, have you ever heard Mark Slaughter do a Gene Simmons imitation? No. Oh my god. Perfect. The next time you talk to my Mark Slaughter, have him do Gene Simmons. You I will. Craig, Craig Gass does the best Gene Simmons though ever. Who? Craig Gass, comedian. Oh, he's great too. Yeah, he so is good. I am so. Sorry. Yeah. Before before I kick it back to Angel because we need to get some more fan questions in. <laughs> this I have to ask just Justin. I have to ask you this question because for this segment, yeah. this is just too good. Okay. You know, were you a fan of Vixen back in the day? Absolutely. Ab <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Now is that is that the because she's next to you answer or is that the real answer? Oh, that's the real answer. Yeah. No, I I I, I believe you, brother. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think um, I think it was the second time we were that we met and got together and talked. The night she tried to kill me with the whiskey, <laughs> my buddy standing next to me, I said, "At the whiskey or with whiskey? Alcohol. With whiskey, Maker's yeah, Mark." With whiskey. Mm -hmm. So yeah, no, absolutely. No, I think those those first two albums are phenomenal. They're great. And when I saw that crying video and I saw Janet, I was like, holy crap. And lo and behold, I'm married to her now. Yeah. Luckiest guy alive. <laughs> How many years? Uh, eight years. Eight, seven. Seven years. Yeah. Seven so years married. We've known each other for about 10 years. Now. Yeah. Oh, good. As long as you don't have the itch, that's okay. No, well, yeah, me, right me and my day. other half just cool. celebrated 25 years. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Oh, right on, man. That's super duper cool. Hell that's yeah, great. man. Angel, let's kick it back up to you. Let's get the metal summoners and the uh and planet Janet fans back involved. <laughs> well, what's your what's your go-to karaoke song? Yeah. I don't do karaoke. I don't do no, that's a no. If I, no. if I ever have enough to drink and I've ever done karaoke, it's something just totally like like the Beastie Boys, something not even remotely close to what we do. Just because, yeah, I, I don't do karaoke. No, I mean, I'll do like a sit-in with bands. I have a couple of those songs. I do Mean Hit Me With Your Best Shot, of course. And um, Rock and Roll, Led Zeppelin. I don't do any Kiss songs. I should, but I don't. You should. Um, I don't know. That's about it. My cover band days were long behind me, so I don't remember a lot of. I don't remember a lot of how to do a lot of songs. We did. Uh, There's only one way to rock with Tyson for Rare Hair, so I know that one now. <laughs> that's about it. Do you have any pre-show or post-show rituals that you do? I don't think so. Not really. I mean, we do do a chant thing before we go out there. Yeah. And but that's about it. We kind of do our own thing. Everyone kind of goes off in their own corner. Goes in their own thing. I, I'm definitely, he's more hyper and more, I'm really quiet and thinking about the show so we definitely are in different zones pre-show yeah it's the one time where we're we're opposites most of the time we're we're kind of the same yeah people, he's but... definitely hyper and i'm definitely quiet and not hyper before the shows and i think it's kind of the same thing after the show too i think you're usually ready to go and 
settle down. And, yeah, I want to wind takes, down because it takes, it takes me, hours. It does. After a great show, you're fired up for a while. Yeah, the adrenaline is like relentless. So let's say we're we're done at like midnight. You know, it's like four o'clock in the morning and your adrenaline is still cranking. So I always like to try to, you know, start winding down a little earlier. But he doesn't. He's going. He stay up all night. I'm working on my drunkness. <laughs> <laughs> working on the next beer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. What's the most crazy tour story? From us together? Yep. Mm. You backed into somebody. I hit somebody's car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a snowstorm. <clears throat> yeah, we... Um, That's not a very fun one, though. It's kind of a... No, we're pretty lame. Yeah, I know I'm thinking about it. We're put on the spot really? here. We're pretty lame. Ugh, we hit someone's car. <laughs> no, that's, you know, being on the road is always crazy and things always go wrong. And for us, what will go wrong, what can go wrong, will go wrong. So every gig, there is a disaster. Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to go one step further. Craziest thing that got thrown up on stage in, in front of either one of you. Well, then you had the Monsters of Rock Cruise. You threw your shorts up on stage at us, didn't you, Bobby? Well, you know, yeah, but they were clean. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I, I'm, I'm commando. <laughs> yeah, in Vixen, there were people, there were guys that threw boxer shorts at us. They thought it was funny. Like the little role reversal, you know, the girls throw their panties and we got some boxers. I think one of them pair landed on Roxy. Oh, geez. Like, oh, my God. I'm amazed she didn't get off the kit and just beat the hell out of me. <laughs> I think she put it in her stick and swung him around. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, it would be, oh my God. It would look like a, uh, like a fondue. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, Bobby. I feel like she couldn't, like, if it was me, I feel like I almost couldn't get mad for them to hit Roxy right on her head from behind the kit. There's a little bit of admiration to accuracy. Yeah, that. You to pack them tight to get them all the way back there. Yeah. 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 If they're flying like a flag, then the wind would just, you know. That Impressive. A lot of, yeah. I'm like, so, Justin, I'm going to geek out right now. So I was given this by Matt Porter, too. Love it. That is awesome. It's what? the original tour guide for Hot in the Shade. That, that wow. is awesome. That's and Leon is it Leon that, that they named him? Yeah, and you know who did the photos in here, don't you? No. So it's the gentleman I intern with. Really, Mr. Mark Weiss Guy Weiss. Oh, awesome! So Mark did all the a lot of the photos in here. Oh, very cool. Yeah, so that. Maybe. So Matt gave me a couple of really cool things. He gave me this. This is the original artwork from Frank. Wait, it's you know, the artwork you know, for Rock and Roll Over. People just give you this stuff? Yeah, you know, look, hey, I'm gay. <laughs> I'm cool. Cool. And hung like a horse. No, <laughs> well, that's why you had no problem throwing your shorts when you were a commando at us on stage and running around. And original picks wow. of all four original members that is cool yeah you that got some awesome. good stuff yeah there yeah. god i just hope nobody breaks in here and you know wants to seduce me or anything well, make that. sure that <laughs> your address is <laughs> but uh no no it, it, it's uh i we're doing a kiss radio show and that's wonderful you know it's just uh you can only have so much of this stuff it's like where the hell do you put it all right yeah that is awesome. But I do have a jacket that was Stan Lee's. And when I was with Gene, Gene goes, how'd you get my coat? And I'll show you this, which is really funny as hell. <laughs> We've never been to his house, by the way. So we'd have no idea how much stuff he has. <laughs> so look. So this jacket was from the Revenge Tour. Wow. Oh, right. I remember those. So this was Stan Lee's, and Stan signed it. 
And the bad thing is I wouldn't let Eric Singer sign. I mean, uh, Tommy Thayer signed the jacket. So Stan signed it, uh, Eric, Paul. But when Gene said that to me, he goes, I know where I'm signing it. And he signed it right over the finger. Beautiful. <laughs> but he told me, he goes, how'd you get my code? He goes, uh, I, I said, I, I bought it off of Stan Lee. I, I got it from Stan. He goes, I gave it to Stan. So I got it. I bought it off of Stan right before he passed away. Wow. So it's probably, everybody asked, you know, what is the coolest thing? This has got to be this. Oh, Absolutely. yeah. That's amazing. Between that's this and, you know, Eric's shirt, uh, I'm just like, you know. Wow. But I'm, I'm the biggest... Look, I think everything, they were the first band I seen in 77 in Philly in the Spectrum. They're the reason why I play music between them and Nugent and everybody. And look, I love 70s rock. I love Elton and everything. And I love that Vixen. Everything all comes secular. But, you know, it's, uh, they were the band that kind of made us do this show and everything else. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, they inspired a lot. Yeah. No doubt about it. Absolutely. And I don't know if you guys seen the movie, what is it, Spinning Gold that came out with the whole thing about Casablanca? Oh, I want to watch it. It's amazing. It's, it's, you know, what a, you think about when we grew up and the period, I mean, just how uh, between rock and disco and everything else, I'm like, look, I, I'm I'm very fortunate that we grew up in an era that you know we had the Alice, and you know, uh, who was the hell was the guy who did the song Fire? Uh, Arthur Brown. Arthur Brown, yeah. So you know, it, it was that stuff. Look, we wouldn't be doing this stuff today if it wasn't for Alice Cooper and all the other people who came before us. Right. Yep. Absolutely correct. Definitely. A hundred percent for sure. Absolutely. Real quick before I throw it out, where do you see your guys the next five years? With four more children. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I don't think we'll ever stop being able to, it's in our blood. Yeah. Every couple of years we'll, We'll come out with something new. Yeah. I mean, we love playing live. We love doing that. But Wait, Janet, does that mean a kid or a song? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 I mean, hopefully just continuing, you know, what we're doing and getting better and better. And, I, you know, I, I can't see us doing anything else. It's you know no, it's in our blood it until is. until we grow we'll be we'll be cranking out music right sure. absolutely that's great absolutely you know, that, that's 100%. Awesome. Angel let's let's steer it back down to you brother <laughs> uh, just related song for Justin what is your favorite Kiss song with Eric Carr on drums and Bruce Cooley well, like, you know before I mean there's so many of them to me I mean to me there's not a bad song on asylum and crazy nights and hot in the shade um but who wants to be lonely from asylum is one of my favorites tears are falling another one that i think is just a powerhouse uh turn on the night off of crazy nights there there's just so many but those are probably in my some of my top songs right there And this question is for Janet. How hard was it for Vixen to break into the hard rock industry being that it was mainly like a guy scene back then? Well, it was really difficult because most, you know, record company people and promoters and things had preconceived notions of women and where the, their place should be in music. And at the time, like right before we got signed and stuff, we were a lot heavier. So we were playing some pretty heavy shit. So I think it, a lot of the powers that be were kind of put off by it and were, their thoughts were kind of like, I don't think people are ready for this. I, you know, I don't think, even though the Runaways had come before and, you know, yeah. the other bands, I, there was still that like, why don't you guys be a country band or something? 
you know, so we you got, had all the stigma behind you. Yeah, we got a lot of that kind of stuff. But, you know, I mean, we just kind of stuck to our guns and got a great following so we couldn't be ignored anymore. It, you know, that's what you have to do. That's what anybody has to do. So that's what we did. Nice. It was hard. Yes. And <laughs> another question for Janet. What was it like touring with the Scorpions in Europe? It was amazing. That was our first arena tour. And I will never forget that tour. It was as everything that you would ever dream and then some. It was, we were so young and, you know, had never played in front of that many people before. It was just absolutely amazing. I, I don't even know, I can't even explain what it felt like. It was a rush every night before going on stage. It was the body buzz. You would hear the crowd, ah, the lights would come down, hear the crowd, and just your whole body was like on fire. It was awesome. Hey, Janet, real quick. So uh, you <laughs> talked about breaking in the industry, being a female. What is your thought uh, with artists like Taylor, Pink, some of these women who are selling stadiums out now and people are even sitting in the parking lot and singing and everything, you know, I, I mean, but I, I just want to hear, how do you feel about it? That is it empowering to you that, you know, feel like that you kind of paved the way for these individuals. Well, I mean, I love seeing it. That's for sure. I think it's just amazing, powerful, you know, women speaking their truth in front of millions of people. It's amazing. I mean, I would never want to like claim any kind of credit for anything, but I love yeah, it. You did pave the way. I mean, you know, it was artists like yourself and Lita and Joan and, you know, uh, before. The pretenders, I mean, you know, there were, you know, look, we'll go to Deborah Harry. If it wasn't for you guys, there would not be a Taylor. There wouldn't be a Pink. There wouldn't be people doing what they are today or a Lizzo. Right. Well, it, I mean, the great thing is that all of those women that you mentioned are completely authentic in their own musical style and what they have to say and how they present themselves. And I mean, I admire them all very much. And yeah, I, I, I think it's amazing to see because it always has been difficult to stand your ground as a woman in any business and, and you know, and the entertainment business, especially it's easy to get swayed or pushed around or talked into doing something that you don't feel is authentic to you. So it's great to see people like those women you mentioned doing their thing full on. Beautiful. Beautiful. Let me ask you, who, who were the artists, female artists who empowered you to pursue this career path? Um, and, and it could be from any decade. I mean, you okay. Know. okay, Aretha Franklin. That was a great one. She's exactly like what I'm talking about. Somebody who would never do a victim song, would never, you know, she did her thing. She meant it. She was authentic. Um, she stuck to her guns. Very inspiring. Janis Joplin, same thing. You know, she was herself so uh, uninhibited by looks or what anybody thought she should be doing or yeah what she looked like or any of that she just did it so people like that there was a bunch more you know the wilson sisters of course um yeah a lot of talent and a lot of balls i want to ask you you just brought that up first time you heard anna nancy what was your impression? And I know what mine was when I heard that first album, when I heard, I was like, oh my God, 
The first time I heard Magic you, Man. When you heard Magic Man for the first time. What? When you heard Magic Man for the first time. Oh, um, I remember hearing it on the radio and I heard, I think it was crazy on you that I heard first though. And I remember my mom asking me, who is that? And I said, it's these two women from like Seattle. Uh, and they're amazing. And even my mom admitted it. She goes, I've never heard <laughs> anything like that. I've never heard a female sing like that. Um, and yeah, that's how I felt too. It was like, who is that? And I want to do that. That's awesome. Yeah. For sure. I, I love to hear stuff like that from a, a, a woman's perspective because, you know, look, we can get the whole thing from the guys. Oh, it was this and that. And, you know, I'm going, wait a second, but I, I want to hear who empowered you, you know, who was that spark? And I love that. Look, I had the opportunity at uh, my other half, former congressman, and we had the opportunity to go to the Kennedy Honors in 2012. I sat next to Aretha. Oh. So I had Aretha on one side and I'm sitting there and I didn't appreciate. I would have died. I but I didn't appreciate who she was till she passed. And it, it was, you know, it, it was that thing. And you don't understand, like you said, what she did. And you go, ah. And I hope there's a little girl who listens to you and Vixen and everybody else and goes, ah, that's why I go. Well, that's the greatest compliment we ever got was, you know, you guys inspired me to join a band. Your, you know, your voice inspired me to start singing or any of those. I mean, you can't, it doesn't get better than that. It just doesn't. Well, it inspired Justin because he married you. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. No, Paul Stanley inspired him. Um, now people. No. <laughs> <laughs> I recognize that. I do that whenever I'm trying to get Jan and like the kids to move and like, you know, get out of the house and do that. <laughs> he does his Paul Stanley. No, he oh. watch, watch Kiss Stuff on YouTube. On YouTube. Oh my God. I do. I do. I actually, back, actually, oh, oh no, go ahead, Janet. No, I said I secretly love it, but I give him a hard time about it. Oh, not again. Not more kiss. Oh my God. As long as he does not like Vinny, that's okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. I did make her watch. You ever watch Kiss Exposed? Yes. I did that's make her watch. Oh, now, could yeah, that be day. any more disrespectful to women? Could they have been any more it's disrespectful? It's epic. It's so good. Come on. I, Come on. It, it, it was great. actually just gonna. It was actually just gonna go there because when me, Angel, and Bobby were all in Nashville, Bobby and I went to this like horror in. Views like movie theater that showed Kiss Exposed, and it was John great. Davidson was there with Jim Florentine and, and Craig Gass and uh, and Courtney uh, and Courtney uh, Dolan. Like um, wow, oh, it was great. You know, they did all commentating on it, yeah. and it was the funniest damn thing you ever seen in your whole oh, life. God, I would love good. to have been there. And the funny thing is, during Kiss Exposed. Courtney was doing this thing where every time the camera panned and there was a passed out girl, she rang a bell. <laughs> really? <laughs> so during, during the show, you'd watch like Paul talking about this or Gene talking about that or, or Eric or whatever. And then all of a sudden from behind, like me and Bobby, you would just hear like, ding, ding. <laughs> there'd be a girl like passed out in the background of the movie. Oh, that's awesome. They should have had like a count going too. Oh my God. Yeah. 50, 51, 52. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, I love it. Absolutely. Angel, let's kick it back down to you, buddy, for some more fan questions. Sure. Um, how did Ricky Rocket end up in the Edge of a Broken Heart video? I don't remember. <laughs> Honestly, I don't remember. I think 
Cher oh, was some... hanging out with him in the video, right? Who's that? Cher, I think, was the one yeah. who was hanging out with him in the video. So I think maybe she knew him and asked him to. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Glad he did it. It was great, but I don't know how it came about. It was a long time ago. Oh, what's on your writer if you have one? What's what? What's on her writer? Brown M&M's. Yes, yeah. if you right, have yeah. Beer. We, we do. IPA beer. Water. Tea. Tea. And we're going to get Gatorade Zero. We're going <laughs> to add that because now we've decided we like that. We're on a no sugar thing, so Gatorade Zero. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have much of a writer. And meals. They have to feed us. Nothing in particular, but they have to feed us. Yeah, we, we need to eat. But yeah, no, my big thing is IPA beer. I have to have my IPAs before and after the show. <laughs> what kind of IPA? I'm a big Lagunitas fan. So I like Lagunitas. I like Founders. Um, Churro. I'd say Lagunitas, so is probably my overall favorite brewery sip of sunshine oh yes yeah now that we're not on the east coast and we're sip in chicago i'm missing some of the east coast ones that we don't have out here but there's some great ones here too in chicago so nice. revolution or anti-hero revolution that's a great one uh now you got me make me go for a beer that's what i just did <laughs> i just ran up and grabbed myself another beer <laughs> i need a gatorade zero hmm. The first half of the show for me started with whiskey, but now I've moved over to my green tea. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Not me. I'm going for that dark, dirty, nasty beer right now. Oh, which means you're drinking that Hershey's beer, aren't you? Oh, because I, you know, look, nothing wrong with going. I would probably Wait, like is that. that really a Hershey's beer? Yes, it's, it's a Hershey's porter. It's, it, it, well, I keep calling it Matt's Dark Brother. Wow, how is that? Uh, have you ever been with a black man? No, I'm like, deep, dark, and delicious. Yeah, yeah. no, because I love porters and stouts are great. You know, you know what it tastes like. <laughs> it's gonna sound wrong. Yeah. But, um, oh, it's so right. If you put dark chocolate. And Miller's Light together. Okay. <laughs> That's exactly. But it's really good. So Yingling makes it. And uh, when every time I, I'm right up, I, I only have to go right up the turnpike to the Hershey Highway and get some of this. Oh, perfect. Cool. <laughs> I've never seen that before. But yeah, they, they do it. it. It's It is really good. Okay. Bobby's talking about going up the Hershey, Hershey Highway. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I love that it says you have to be 21 to enjoy it. Well, <laughs> I've known a lot of people who went up Hershey younger than that. <laughs> uh, Mr. Mr. Dreyer, how we've missed you. Come on. I bought this yesterday. How many people could get a gay Twizzler shirt at Hershey Park? <laughs> I just figured it came off the Bobby Dreyer merch line. <laughs> no, I went up yesterday to ride the coaster. You know me, I love to ride my wood. And I went up to ride the coaster and I was like, oh my God, they got a Gates Whistler shirt. Gates <laughs> Whistler, Hershey beer. Look. Oh. <laughs> I'm like a party in my own mouth. Bobby. <laughs> my eyes are watering. I can't make Angel laugh or he's going to shit himself. Her name's Jazzy. She had right. that 
that. Sorry, Janet. You thought you were going to get that, you know, somebody nasty interview just, tonight. Just in time to get us out of that. <laughs> we should take advantage of it. Oops. <laughs> so I got to tell you this. So Angel J and I, we were at M3. Okay. We, uh, we got, <clears throat> Jay and I got interviewed for Paramount Plus. So this guy hit me with a question. Well, he hit Jay with it first. Okay. The most rock and roll thing you ever done. So uh, uh, Jay did his question and I did mine. The guy, I said, he goes, you can do anything. It's uncensored, but you got to sign a waiver. I said, really? You sure you're ready for this? <laughs> he goes, what? I said, I hit on Rob Halford. In 1988, on the Ram It Down tour. And Rob wasn't out yet. Oops. Wow. <laughs> Talk you. about free wheel burning. You, yeah. you knew what you were doing. Yeah. Well, no, I didn't. You know. <laughs> I just read the lyrics closely. <laughs> read it down. Oh, yeah. see? <laughs> yeah, there's a few of them. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, hey, look, you know, it, it, it's all good. Yeah. Yep. Um, I got, oh, okay, Janet, since we're on this, uh, 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 that subject right now, have you ever, ever gotten hit on by a female fan? Oh, of course. I mean, big time. Course, and I'm not talking about the one who goes to Home Depot, but I'm just talking about you know. <laughs> <laughs> girls that you wouldn't expect, you know, that you wouldn't go, oh, and they're you know, whatever, but yeah, you know, many times I don't know if they assumed that you know, we're a chick band, yeah, there's probably some of that going on, but yeah. Well, they figure there's five females on the road, and they're like going, "Yeah, really? Okay, you know." Yeah, what are the odds that none of them are, you know, doing anything together? People but I, I'm just wondering if any. And, and Justin, wait, I got to ask. Look, you got that pretty boy look. Come on, you you had to get that. Hey, no. Uh -huh. I, come on, Janet. Let, let's go this way. <laughs> no, we're getting really, we're getting really, yeah. But yeah, trust me, I have seen it. <laughs> you know, yeah. I'm not the only one. Look, when I was on the cruise and I said that to somebody and they're like, oh, you're gay? I'm going, yeah, why? And they're like, and they're laughing, look. But I know I'm not the only one on the cruise ship going, oh, we're all staring at Janet. Bullshit. <laughs> I call bullshit. <laughs> yeah, you made my night. <laughs> no, I'm oblivious. I things go right over my head. I, I don't think I have. Really, dude? Come on. For sure. <laughs> and we I, all went to Bon Jovi concerts and went. Yeah, I sleep with him. <laughs> I'm I'm so tempted to tell, but I'm not gonna. <laughs> It'd be good. Oh. Uh, I need another sip of beer. <laughs> no, nah, dude, Bobby. Honestly, I I think that fa I think that's facts, dude. I think I'm on Team Justin when it comes to that. I get I get yelled at all the time by Megan because I don't I do not pick up on things. Right. Like, I'm just I'm used to kind of I'm used to things. I love everything, and I don't really notice things, but she notices everything and has to tell me about it later. Wait, before you go into this. Jay is three blocks away from a gay bar in Maryland. I and I've been to the bar and I know where it is. I'm like, Jay, bullshit. I know people come in there and going, he's hot looking. I could take him home. <laughs> and Jay, that is like one of the biggest leather bars, too, down in Maryland and Baltimore. Don't even give me that. I know they wander in there going, shit. I could take that straight guy home. <laughs> Ha. You, you, you know nothing about what I'm involved in. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's 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 break this one back. Break this up a little bit. Let's uh, bring it back down to Angel a little bit. Question from yourself, brother, or anything that we still have for the fans. 
before we take it over to uh to the se- uh to the uh next segment fans it is going to be last call for alcohol as well it's about that time any final comments questions anything you want to wa- ask justin and janet by all means pump it into the comments we will get to it but it is that time because we definitely want to uh respect the rest of their evening and show appreciation for the time that they've given us so last call for alcohol fans final questions and comments but go ahead angel do you have a favorite venue that you have performed at? I mean, the Arcata Theater that we're going to play at next week to kick everything off is definitely a favorite just because there's so much sentimental value to it for us. And it's a great place. I think that's my favorite that we've played so far. Yeah. Um, uh, the Vixen Theater in McHenry. Was right. a great venue. There's a new. We filmed our videos there. Yeah, there's a new venue that opened up out of the Chicagoland mm-hmm. area, ironically called the Vixen Theater, <laughs> and uh, we filmed our two new videos at that theater, and it's a great, great place. Um, ironically, too, with Dingbats in New Jersey. Yes, we love that place, and yeah. we all had such a great time. And it's been a few years since we've been back. Oh, yes, it is. We need to get back there too. And uh, I know there's other places that I'm just trying to, but the whiskey is always a great time in Hollywood. Yeah, for bigger venues, like with Vixen, there was um, this venue in Stockholm, and it looks like a giant golf ball. I think it's called the Globe or something. That was one of the coolest things I've ever seen, mm-hmm. let alone play the show there. It was cool. I think we did both Deep Purple and Scorpions there. That was a cool venue. Look like a golf ball. <laughs> <laughs> or a testicle. <laughs> when you're when you're having a bad day, what song picks you up? Oh, what was that? What? When you're having a bad day, what song? When you're a bad day. Up? What song picks you up? Sweet emotion, Aerosmith. Nice. I can put that on. I don't care what's happening, if I'm having the worst day ever, or if, you know, I'm whatever, whatever's going on, I put that on and I feel good. I'm rocking out. I'm, I'm feeling a, it. I'm good. I'm going to go back to Kiss and say, take it off, off of Revenge. Nice. <laughs> that song, just, how could you go wrong? How could that not as a guy put a smile on your face and make you happy? All right. Off the record. Guilty it's pleasure never, song. Hold on Guilty a second, Bobby. With you, it's never, Bobby, it's never off the record with you. Okay, Guilty Pleasure song. It could be Afternoon Delight or whatever. What is that song that you just go? You never want anybody hearing you sing alone in the car. Oh, boy. Oh, no. Mine's going to have to be... Oh... Come on, dig deep. Well, sky rockets at night. <laughs> uh, um, God. I, I don't think I have one because I'm so picky with my music that it's. Oh, we all have that K Tow song that's stuck in our head. I like a couple Ed Sheeran songs. Like nobody, nobody's got Seasons in the Sun by Terry Jacks? No. <laughs> I got Hanson. A couple of Hanson songs I think are pretty damn good. I love Hanson. Yeah, they're great. Uba. Hey, yeah, my, my Uba. buddy, our great. buddy on here, Mark Hanson, Mark Hudson, wrote Mbop for Hanson. Oh, nice. There you go. So, hey, nothing wrong with that. You know, no. it's going to put money in your, but everybody's got that guilty pleasure. So I never want anybody knowing that I'm going to go, don't cry <laughs> out loud that you're sitting in the car balling like a chick. <laughs> Come on, Justin. What's that song? <sighs> Celine Dion doesn't make you cry. Oh, I don't, I, I don't listen to her. <laughs> well, okay. I'm, I'm trying. Okay. But... I'll give you one that pulls up my heartstrings to this very day. The heart of the matter, Don Henley. I cannot hear that song without damn near crying every time I hear it. The heart of the matter, Don Henley. Nice. 
See, I know I could make him a geek out. That's <laughs> just absolutely gets me every single time. So there you go. Yes. <laughs> All right, back to you, Angel. Did he freeze, or is he in nope. the bathroom? He does appear to be frozen. I forget. No, no, I didn't freeze. I just. <laughs> I'm just trying not to. I'm just trying not to laugh. Well, Round table question: Do you use the shower? What? Huh? <laughs> do you sing in the shower? Round well, table I you said, question: Do they do what in the shower? Sing in the shower? No, do you sting in the shower? Yeah. Sting in. The do you sing, sing in the shower? Sing in the shower. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, of course. If there's a melody in my head, especially when we're working on new music, I'll always kind of like hum out something in the shower. So I can't help it. I don't think I do. Really? Have you ever heard me sing in the shower? I guess no. I don't, I don't think I do. That's odd. One of the few times I don't sing. She's weird. I am weird. <laughs> All right. Weird question. Who passed gas first when you first met? Oh my God, Bob, you're hilarious. I'm not going there. Yeah. Why? I didn't I didn't, I didn't, I didn't I, you know, look, we all get in that thing. I'm not gonna what? say anything. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. No, no. <laughs> I still don't no, know. Bobby. Hey, you're so Look, sure, we bro. are so not Eddie Trunk. Don't worry about it. I don't think he's <laughs> ever even done that to me, honestly. I think he leaves the room still to this Let's day. See. So does that mean you gave him a Dutch oven? <laughs> <laughs> no more Hershey's beer for you, Bobby. You got no gotta more start. Hershey's beer. Yeah. No more. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So here, so I'll I'll jump in. I'll jump in on this for uh for one uh for one like final like segment before we uh we start like wrapping up. So um Bobby and I are the big like gear nerds of the show. Bobby's the guitar guy. I'm the bass guy. And so we always love talking about that. I've got thirty plus guitars and basses in my house, which is dwarfed by Bobby's hundred and sixty. But that's really not the point. I wanted you guys to actually do a rig ru rundown for fans that are curious. What do you guys play and what's your setup? Wow. I Wow, well, I thought I was bad with, like, buying guitars. But guitars. I, I got to go to his house. I told you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my oh. name it, I got it. So, wait, wait. Before we go on it, so I got to give a shout out to Mark Minarak from Minarak Guitars in Vegas. He just That's sent beauty. me this. Uh, it's... Uh, uh, I, I bought it when I was out at NAMM and it's a 12 string and it's, uh, as everybody knows, uh, my other half's last name in Portuguese means rabbit. So it's all Alice in Wonderland. That is really beautiful. That is unbelievable. That's, that's a piece of art. Gorgeous. Um, How does it sound? Uh, great. Amazing. I mean, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. All right. Yeah. That great. yeah, that, that is beautiful. Um, yeah, <laughs> as far as a, a, like a rig rundown, um, live, I, I love the EVH guitars. I, I think that the Wolfgang guitars are just a dream to play. And, um, so I'll use those. And then our bass player, Anthony builds guitars as well. Uh, Moxie guitars. Yes. He has built great stuff. Yeah, some killer. He designed this checkerboard Telecaster, Rick Nielsen looking on psychedelic guitars for me that I just absolutely love. So between the EVH and that, that's my go-to for live shows and in the studio too. Um, I love, you know, especially 90% of our shows are fly dates. So I hate going to venues and you don't know what backline you're going to get, if it's going to be a Marshall or a Mesa Boogie. So I have a Line 6 Helix that I use for both the studio and on the road. So I know every night what I'm going to get, my sound, 
and that's it. So basically, yeah, just the EVH or the Moxie right into the Line 6 Helix, and I'm good to go both recording and on the road. Justin, what would be your, if it was one guitar that you wish you could have, what would it be? Oh, give me one second. He's been through a lot of them. Yeah. So oh, he's like, oh, I want to really want a Paul Reed Smith. So then he got one of those. Well, now I really no, no, no. Want but I, I, I'm talking vintage, whatever. Well, so this was this Steve Vai guitar. That I see if I can get the glare off. Ah, I love that. The floral pattern. When I was when I first saw this guitar in Guitar Center, I freaking loved it and I wanted it so bad. And uh, I actually bought it. I ordered one. And by the time I think it was like three weeks into the order, they discontinued them. So I never got it. It never came. And I ended up getting the white Steve Vai guitar that he always plays, which was fantastic, but it wasn't the flowery eighties one. And I remember seeing the band bad for good, the kid band and Thomas McRocklin, the guitar player had wow. changed out the pickups from all pink and put color green. And I think he had a blue one here. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So I finally was able to get a hold of one of these, change out the pickups, kind of do a similar vibe to it. So this was a dream guitar of mine. Other than this, obviously it would be the Cracked Mirror, Iceman, Ibanez guitar would be the other one. Ah, beautiful, and beautiful. Did, wait, oh, didn't you have one? I had the black one. Oh, I had the black, okay. I had the, the black one, which I love and I, I miss and I wish I didn't right. sell it and get rid of it. But, uh, but yeah, the Shattered Mirror, Iceman is my my other one that one day, one day as Bobby goes and grabs his probably in the closet right now and <laughs> shows us. No, no. It's probably going to be my Budokan. Oh, is that the Ace Freely? Yeah. Yep. Oh, nice. Triple Humbucker. Yep. The Beautiful. Yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, I got a lot of wood here. <laughs> We go yeah, we were talking. We were talking so much about Paul Stanley and and Kiss that this is actually my newest like toy that I just got, which is that is awesome. all glittery and nice. Oh yeah, that's the the glitter sparkle uh, ice yeah. man. Beautiful. That's great. I love those guitars. Nice. Totally, dude. I trust me. I'm with you. I would absolutely love to get my hands on a cracked mirror as well. But this will absolutely do for the time being yeah absolutely i think the crack they're like seven grand or something or seven or eight uh, yeah like i mean i i feel like i i feel like i wouldn't be able to just put out like a couple more songs i feel like i would have to release a few albums to buy that guitar absolutely yeah <laughs> but janet yeah. how about yourself or a rig rundown um i also use a helix we're, we're doing helixes live. Dueling um, helixes. And I have my Les Paul. It's like a 70s. I've had this for 30 years now. Wow. And nice. it's my favorite guitar. And I, we don't, I don't take it everywhere. Once in a while, I'll steal one of these <laughs> um, EVHs because I really like those too. But this is my baby. This is my main, mm -hmm. my main baby. Yeah, it's hard to fly with this thing because it weighs about 50 pounds. It's hard to so. play a set, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, Janet. Yeah. Well, this is my baby, and it never leaves the studio or anything. So this is my 59. Oh, my wow. God. That's sick. I want that now. <laughs> <laughs> it's original 59. That is really something. Yeah, that's awesome. Wow, look at that finish. Yeah, I wish. I wish I. Could. So I got it before they went through the roof. Really? Did you? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm I like uh, 40, 50 grand. Now? Now? Um, is that what you had? Another zero bond. <laughs> How did you get that? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> that's uh that's the uh that's Breaking the follow-up yeah. to the hidden no 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 uh um, story no it's it, so yeah it's uh wow 
Wow. Yeah. I've had it now probably about 15 years. And when I bought it, uh, I paid 30 for it. Okay. Now they go for about a lot more. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. saw that, that show. What was that documentary we saw about the... Oh, the place in Tennessee. Yeah, that right. had the most incredible guitar collection. What was that place called? I don't remember. Dang it. Do you remember? Did you see that? Bobby, did yeah, you I know which one you're talking about. But... Yeah, well, they had one. They had one of those in their collection, and they had everything. I just wanted every guitar in that show. Well, it's, it's even like this. So these were one of the one-offs Gibson did for... So this is one of Neil Sean's. Oh, very nice. Oh, nice. So as you can see, it's got his sustainers in it and everything. And then he went to PRS. And so they only did a couple of these. So I have uh, this one and one of his gold ones. But yeah, I, I have a lot of guitars that should I, Earl Slick, who was with Bowie. I have Earl. Yeah. 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 Uh, What's over here? Oh, wait. Oh, so this is probably, Jan oh, you would love this. So this was used on the bad tour. Really? That's yeah, this was, yeah, this is uh, Jennifer Batten's. Wow. Oh. Holy cow. Yeah, that's cool. With, uh, you know, it's got the 13 pin in here and everything. So yeah, she did it when she did all that. So it's got the sustainer with a Floyd and all that crap in here. Where'd you, where'd you pick that up? <laughs> Off of Jennifer. <laughs> Jeez. But, uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, it's like, oh, wait, Justin's <laughs> a, a, a geek. Thank Justin. you. <laughs> wait, MTV Unplugged? Oh, oh, I recognize that's Gene's bass. Very cool. <laughs> awesome. Look, I have a studio here. If you guys ever want to record, <clears throat> just saying. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> All right. Collection, Bobby. Impressive. Yeah. Impressive. Uh, no, I'm a geek. I'm. I'm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Look, I'm. I'm. Everybody thinks. You know, one thing I love guitars. I love being around musicians. I love being, you know, you guys inspire me. Everybody inspires me. I'm like, you know, what the hell? Mm -hmm. I was that kid growing up who sat out in front of the spectrum going, oh, wow. And I love that I can hang with you guys. Monsters of Rock, be with Jay and Angel every week and do stuff like this. I'm st I'm a 58-year-old, 14-year-old. <laughs> That's uh, great. The only way to be. Yeah. Yes. And and thank you guys for keeping us all young and doing what you're doing. And thank you for making new music. Oh, thank oh, you. Our pleasure. Thanks for, you know, being supportive and doing stuff like this. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, everything we do here and the crap I do is tongue in cheek. But uh, I, I know you guys have heard this new extreme album. I mean, when I heard this, I'm like, oh my God, Nuno solos on here reminds me of the first time I heard Van Halen's album. And I, I told K Fig in that I was like, wow, I, I love that you guys are putting new music out. That makes me go, oh, I gotta, oh, I gotta play. I gotta hear great harmonies. I gotta hear beautiful vocals. You know, and everything you guys do, whatever group it is, thank you. You're the ones who make me want to go out and spend the money and pay StubHub and go, you know, do this and keep seeing you guys. So thank you for coming on tonight with us. Oh, our pleasure. This That's has been a pleasure. lot of fun. Yeah, thanks awesome. for having us. Always a pleasure, 100%. Angel, let's kick it down to you real quick, buddy. Have any final questions popped up from the fans, or is there anything final from yourself? Uh, let me just double check. I was just thinking about I'm Living Free. Like, first time hearing that song, I listened to it 10 times because it's one of those songs that just really kicks ass. You would just want to go back and just listen to it over and over again a few more times because it's really that good. 
just want to say thank you for the new music. It re it really did pass. Oh, thank you That's so great. much. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thanks. Mwah. Absolutely. Keep it out. Keep, thank keep you guys going. so much. And real quick, Janet, Justin, before we guys cut you loose, where can you guys be found? Where can they see your tour dates? Where can you be found? And where can they buy merch? The best place would be obviously Facebook, um, Gardner James. Yeah, um, JanetGardnerMusic.com. And there's links to like, if you want to buy merch and stuff, there's links on there. Yeah, JanetGardnerMusic.com is probably the best place because tour dates, tour dates, merch is all in one spot on there. And you can find No Strings anywhere Spotify, Amazon, Amazon um, iTunes, iTunes any of, anywhere. It's pretty much everywhere. So that's easy to find. So go find it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> A hundred percent. Well, Janet, Justin, again, we can't thank you guys enough for spending time out of your evening to hang out with us. And first and foremost, congratulations on no strings. We yes. can't wish you any more than just the absolute best for the continued success of that record, as well as your catalog. And good luck on tour, especially in the next couple of days, because you're about to get out on it. Thank yeah. you so much, you guys. This has been a blast. And awesome. buckle up with Sebastian. That show in the 25. Look, I might even have to come out to that show. You better. That, just, that sounds like a party in itself right there. Yeah. Please let us know if you're going to make oh it. Oh, my God. I, I'm looking at that one. I, I, we love. I, I'm looking at that and just going, that's a party yeah. right there. If anybody's going to. You guys, Sebastian. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It'll be good. Yeah. Well, 100% for sure. Metal Summoners, thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you guys. You're always fantastic. Thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you so much for supporting Janet and Justin and everything that they're doing. So make sure that you guys get out to this tour. Check them out. Pick up no strings on whatever platform fits you best. You know, they appreciate it. We appreciate it. And we've got music back. And it's really, really exciting to have that feeling again. So and we, we want them in Philadelphia, guys. too. I don't see any Philly dates there. Okay. I know. We need a Maryland date. Yes, we I don't do see any. For sure. Yeah, we do need to do that. We do. Yes. Wow. Hello. All Heaven's right. Edge just put a new album out. There's a lot of groups around here. Look, talk to Mark Weiss. We can get you around here. Dingbats, whatever. Yeah. Hey, speaking of that, before you guys go, so tomorrow, well, one is my partner's birthday, but tomorrow is Mark Weiss's 64th birthday. Wow. Mark Weiss. So happy birthday, Mr. Mark Weiss, Guy Weiss. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mark Weiss. Uh, well, yeah, also, happy, also, happy birthday to uh, TMS alumni uh, David Merrill, David Phantom from Evelyn's Casket, who's been on the show, like I said. It is his birthday today, so happy birthday, brother. We appreciate you as well. So it's a, it's a whole mess of birthdays. We got yes. Tony Coelho. We've got Mark Weiss. We've got David Phantom. Happy birthday, everybody. All right. Absolutely. Justin, Janet, thank you so much thank for an amazing so evening. Yeah, thank you. This was a lot of fun. Great hanging out with you guys. <laughs> Always a pleasure. Anytime that you guys want to pop on to say what's up or anything that you guys ever need push, don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you, Jay. Appreciate it. You guys are the best. Love Absolutely. you. Absolutely. We'll talk to you soon. Best of luck on tour, and we appreciate you guys so much. Thank you. Bye, guys. Absolutely. Bye. Take care. Great night. Summoners, thank you guys so much. We appreciate everything that you've done to support ourselves as well as our guests. Make sure that you're checking out Justin and Janet out on tour, like I said before. And uh, we will see you guys in a week. Guest announcement over the weekend. It's going to be another great one. We're really excited about that show. And on behalf of the Metal Summit, for Bobby Dreyer, make sure you're checking him out on bobbydreyer.com. Angel Alamo on Angel Alamo, both on Facebook and Instagram. Psycho Steve on Psycho Steve on the real Psycho Steve on Instagram, as well as Psycho Steve on Facebook. We also want to sh um, give a shout out to our brother, Blevins Block, uh, Vox for popping in for a minute. I think he had a little bit of technical difficulties, but make sure you're checking out what he's doing with 13 South. And you can catch me at Just a R &R Junkie on Instagram, and you can also find me on Facebook as well. So we appreciate you guys. Make sure you're checking out Janet and Justin on their socials as well for um, anything that's involving No Strings and their upcoming tour. But Metal yes. Summers, we appreciate you guys. We love you guys. Have a great weekend. Be good to each other, and we'll see you guys in a week. Watch for the guest announcement, and you guys take care. On behalf of 
Janet Gardner, Justin James, and Planet Janet. And for Bobby, Steve, Angel, and myself, we'll see you guys next week. As always, you've been watching The Metal Summit. Yes. Love you guys. Thank you, guys.